but I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, um, you know, offend anyone who may think they've thought this, uh, taught this topic before. But it's really an exciting, unique aspect of looking at how um, the sound and the recitation of the Quran, which oftentimes we find in throwaway prayers or different uh, times in our lives, the recitation actually impacts us. It has, it can stir us, it can move us, and you can see that most profoundly when you see people who uh, don't even understand what they're saying. And, and most people associate Fulake with Arabic language, which is part of what we do, uh, which focuses on the understanding through the intellect. But there's something spiritual about the recitation of the Quran, uh, something that impacts us at our very core, at a deeper level than even our heart or even our, our, our minds. And that's really where we want Imam Majid to uh, address us today, is how the sound, and he named this himself, mashallah, it's such a catchy title, um, sound effects. I, I see an upcoming, forthcoming book, actually, with this, with this title, um, which we've been um, talking about. Uh, so the, the effect that the sound of the Qur'an, the recitation, has uh, on the meaning and, and how it can impact us. So we're very excited to that. It's very, um, we're honor, honored to have Qadi Abdul Kanim with us. He's a master reciter of the Qur'an. He's from Morocco, which is a hub of Islamic education and recitation of the Qur'an and people who love the Qur'an and the Prophet. Uh, he's recited in, in front of many gatherings across the world internationally. He's recited in front of the king of uh, Morocco himself, uh, and he's a very renowned uh, Qadi. Uh, in addition to that, in the U.S., he's been here for 13 years, and he's been called upon by a number of different organizations. He often goes to California to uh, recite uh, for the Ta'lif and Zaytuna programs, uh, and we're very honored to have him with us to open this program with some recitation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله نور السماوات والأرض مثل نوره كمشكات فيها مصباح المصباح في زجاجة الزجاجة كأنها كوكب دري يوقد من شجرة مباركة يوقد من شجرة مباركة زيتونة لا شرقية ولا غربية يكاد زيتها يضيء ولو لم تمسسه نار نور على نور يهدي الله لنوره من يشاء ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس والله بكل شيء عليم في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال رجال رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة 
يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب صدق الله العظيم Uh, for those um, beautiful words um, from the Quran. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, Sister Hannah. She put together the, the presentation here. Uh, we also, in addition to that, I just want to get you guys prepped. We have uh, Reflections of the Quran, which is a book that Imam Majid has uh, written as a co-author with Hannah. And um, they've been generous enough to give us uh, copies of those books. Uh, all the proceeds will be going towards the scholarship fund for Fuake, which supports uh, students uh, to access uh, the courses that we offer across the country. Uh, so please, if you if you have, want an opportunity to buy that, it's a it's the second edition. So even if you have last year's version, this is actually a new version of the book. And it's I personally try to read it every year before Ramadan. It's a great way to connect with the Quran. It has amazing insights. It has a new um, component that wasn't there in previous editions, uh, which are exercises to help you practically apply the Quran. Uh, so we're going to be, we have that on sale outside the $15. So if anyone's interested in that, you can speak to us afterwards. Um, now I'd like to have Imam Majid uh, come, come up and um, address us, inshallah. <laughs> Bismillah walhamdulillah Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Rahmatul muhdah wa namatul muhdah wa ala wa adu billahi mushur al-anfus min siyat al-amal Yahdillahu fahu al-muhtad wa man yudlil falan tijid lahu wa li mushida Allahumma shrah li sadri wa sirli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli I would like just to say that I shared this idea thought that I have it was one of the scholars from Jordan. We were in a trip. And subhanAllah, I, today, just before the class, I come to know that he wrote a paper on it. Um, and I get the paper, actually. He sent it to me. Uh, when I went home and tried to prepare and open my, my email uh, to see the PowerPoint presentation being sent, I get his article which is uh, very interesting and we have translated to English. We're together in Europe, actually, and he's a, a professor of Quran and Tafsir. For I shared with him in three hours bus ride, the idea I have, and uh, he sent it to me. He put it in the article. But I would like just to say uh, the this science has been developed uh, long time ago before all of us are here and what uh, I have seen Imam al-Jahid and Ibn al-Jinni they have spoke about what they call the Swatul Quran the impact of the sounds in the Quran and they developed also science of the importance of the waqf uh, why we do the waqf al-lazim. Uh, we have to stop when you read in the Quran. And therefore, there's a, a lot of literature being developed by the classical scholars into this regard. 
but I said, inshallah, we'll develop it and share it in English with all of you. Um, I would like just to say in the beginning, I feel very small talking about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the end of a ocean have, uh, an ocean doesn't have an end. And we get some glimpse and we, like children, putting our feet in the beginning of the ocean and wetting our feet. And we try to get excited by wetting our feet. And therefore, this is, I would like you to put in that regard. Because this is the, the infinite wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in his word, but we will not be able to comprehend the infinite wisdom. He give us some of this wisdom that we can be able to live our life, to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala, but who give us opportunities also to discover the beauty of this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore I would like in this uh, short presentation to give you some glimpse of this and maybe uh, some other time we'll develop a, a course with help with the brother and sister in Fawaki in, in, in the science of the Aswat al-Quran, the sound effects, the impact of reciting Quran uh, in the way that we recite it today, which is Ilm al-Tajweed. I would like just to say that the, some scholars argue that some of aspects of Ilm al-Tajweed, it is part of the Arabic language, the spoken Arabic language at the time. Some of aspect of it is only regarding the Quran only. Yani the, the Arabic, the average Arab person, he pronounce huruf, pronunciation of letters, the way that we've been asked in Ilm al-Tajweed, the science of Tajweed. But some of the Hudud, Adunan, it's not necessarily that the Arab used to speak like that. It becomes specialized, something that with the Quran itself. Because they don't decide their poetry necessarily with those same ahkam of the Quran. And I said always, I repeat myself on this, but I will repeat it in three, four minutes, then we'll go to the rest of the presentation. From day one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named his speech different from the Arab speech. Those who have been in my classes for many times, many years, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the unit of verses. Simple? What he called? Unit of many verses together. What do you call that? Surah. What the Arab called the unit of verses of poetry? They call it Qasida. The unit, the poem itself, they call it Qasida. What they call a verse of poetry? Who said this? I mean, bait. What Allah called a single verse? Ayah. What Allah, what the, what the name of the end of the verses? When the verse ends, what do you call the end of the verses? What do you call them? Fawasil, Fasila. What do you call the end of the Arabic poetry? You call Kafia. Therefore, the Arab did not say, oh, why do they call it this Fasila? Why do they call it Surah? Have you seen anyone uh, recite a poem in Arab before Islam and say, this is my Surah for you today? Never happened. But Allah called it surah, and Arabs submit to it. They say, yes, this is unique. It's not a qasida. The same thing, the sound comes with the Quran. You, you, the, uh, it is amazing that I, my father, rahimahullah, when, when he visited former Soviet Union at the time that the still communism is there, an old lady met him, uh, and he asked her, she said to him, my father wearing a turban, wearing a robe, walking in the street of Moscow. <laughs> And has interpreted with him, and this old lady said, Salam alaikum, Salam alaikum. And my father said to the interpreter, She wants to talk to tell me something. She said, You you remind me of our, our fathers and so forth, the way you dress. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim lady. I'm a Muslim. And she said to him, That make dua for me. And my father became interested to see how she kept her Islam, how she preserved her Islam. She said one of the ways they preserved the Islam, they were listening to the uh, cassette tapes of Sheikh Abdul Basid Abdul Samad, Arabic. <laughs> Sheikh Abdul Basid Abdul Samad rahimahullah, recited the Quran in France, and many non-Muslims were in his presence. Just listen to those, 
the beautiful recitation of the Quran. Quran has its own impact on people. Therefore, I would like not to go too long on this introduction. Uh, we'll go to the, the part of presentation. Who's controlling the... Okay, good. Um, the, therefore, I said this, the, the study of this uh, uh, phonetics or the study of his speech sounds, it is very old uh, science. Uh, I said the Jahiz, the Jinni, all of those people that spoke about that. Uh, the major principle of Tajweed is what? Which was somebody said, define Tajweed from the linguistic point of view. What do you say? The relationship of each of the if every letter to another letter and the pronunciation of every letter. That's it. You know how to pronounce even a word, a word has many letters. How to pronounce it, the relationship of those letters in that word, it would make Tajweed. Um, the first person really wrote in the uh, issue of Tajweed was Khalil ibn Ahmed. Khalil ibn Ahmed was commissioned by Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu actually. And, and the first book been written, first person put the foundation, Khalil ibn Ahmed. First book, Abu Talib al-Makki. Many people don't know that. He wrote the book uh, on, on Tajweed. Uh, it meant to, pr to preserve the pronunciation of the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the way that Rasulullah sallam have recited. Now, I would like just to say here that the Quran being preserved in many ways. One is the Arabic grammar being developed, the, the pronunciation, the sense of pronunciation, and then the matrix and the principles of tafsir. All of those are the ways to protect the Quran from being changed. Now, go ahead to the next. I said, if I give too long introduction, philosophical introduction, you will say, the time have got passed, you did not get to the meat of the, uh, of, of the, of the class. Therefore, I'm going to give you some taste, the taste of this. Okay. Now, who knows Arabic very well here? Arabic grammar. Many are from Lua. How do you write this in the uh, standard Arabic? Read this ayah. Iqra ya shaykhira. In a Mus'haf, this Ain here, in the Arabic language, you have to have a reason to have the wow disappeared. If it's written in the contemporary Arabic today, it will be ويدعو with wow. صح ولا لا يا شيخ؟ طيب أين ذهبت الواو؟ Why there's no wow؟ دعاء يدعو ها؟ دعاء يدعو طيب صحيح if you say if there's a wow how it will pronounce if there's if you put a wow here actually would it be like what؟ ها؟ if if, if there's wow ها؟ you can you can say where the u is give you but they says <laughs> This being taken to emphasize where do al insan be shart dua ahu bil khair. Therefore, in the modern Arabic language, you'll find this wow here because there's no jazm actually, nothing happened to it, change it. I'm just giving you the connection between even how it's written and how it's pronounced. Here, if you recite this, if also this will be what? Sanad'u. But iqra'aha, no? Sanad'u zabaniya. What is zabaniya? Huh? Angel Hellfire. Allah saying he will do what? What is the English translation of this? Sanad'u zabaniya. 
فليدعو ناديه سندعو الزبانية let him call his people because وليد بن المغيرة said what or أبو جهل said oh محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم you threaten me with hellfire I have cloud in this city I have people قرآن said what فليدعو ناديه let him call his people سندعو الزبانية it gives you the indication that Allah, when you call the angel, they come what? Immediately. Sanad'u al-Zabaniya. It gives you the rhythm, the feeling of the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he said, Sanad'u al-Zabaniya is weaker. If there's a wow here. Sanad'u al-Zabaniya. Sanad'u al-Zabaniya. Did you hear, you hear what this is? Okay. If I'm too excited, you don't understand what I'm talking about, I will repeat myself. Go to the next. Iqra Hadia. Where is uh, Saad? Is not here too? Iqra, Sheikh. Am Yakuru Naftara Ala Allah Kaliba? Fae Yasha Illa Huyakhtim Ala Kolbik. Wayam Fulla Hulba Hulla Wayushakul Hakka Bikarimati. إنه عليم بذات الصدور. Let me ask you this here. What are the أحكام of تجويد in this? Give me something about it. أم يقولون افترى على الله كذبا. What is the ruling? Sign me anything that struck you. Yeah, yeah, from here to here. A any any ruling? Where is that? Where here? I mean, يقولون افترى على الله كذبا. Where is that? Yes. Now, let me tell you something. This ayah, what the translation of this ayah? I did not put translation intentionally. Am yaquluna. Or they say, iftara ala Allahi kadiba. Iftara ala Allahi kadiba. How you pronounce this aqra min hina ila hina? Am yaquluna iftara ala Allahi kadiba. Then, fa iyasha. Where in this ayah that you find that Sheikh uh, Abdul Karim, when he recited, it took a longer vowel? Here. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reported to you what they say about him, about the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish what he would do to the heart. Are you having English translation with you? The seal of heart of whom? The, the one who falls in what? It says, uh, do they say he has forged a falsehood against Allah? So against the one who's making a claim against Allah? Nope. If he will, if Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do, if Tara Allah, what will happen? 
Yes. But because Allah loves Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you feel this is quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. They're saying this about you, they're saying this about you. Saying this about you. Then Allah said what? إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ when it come about him, in all the Quran, take it from me, when they say something negative about Allah, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it passed quickly. Sallu ala Rasulillah. Did you know, hear that, sister? When they're about Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is what? It's quick. I can give you, by the way, there about 15 examples, but I give you a test of one that is not obvious. Okay? Go to the next. Because we're going to do this quickly because I have only 40 minutes. Now, Al-Fatiha. And by the way, even in, in, in the ayat that you recite today, when he described the, the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فِي بُوِتٍ أَدْرَ اللَّهُ أَن تُرْفَعُ وَيَذْكَرُ فِيهَا شِئَشْ اسمه يسبح له, له فيها بالغدوي رجال إيش؟ طيب وإقام الصلاة بعد إقام الصلاة إيش؟ طيب إقام إيتاء هدمد أو نو؟ إيتاء الزكاة هدمد؟ طيب إقام الصلاة هدمد؟ مد طبيعي What are the longer mud? The longer mud إيتاء أو إقام؟ أها صلاة you pray five times a day زكاة once a year you have time for زكاة but إقام الصلاة Do you hear that? I'm just giving you some of the glimpse of this. But now, just go to this. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم How many haraka? How many haraka in this? Sitta or khamsa. Taib. Hina, al-maghdub. What is this? Harakatin. Taib, yaakhi, maghdub is maghdub or dalin. Which one is stronger? No, no, no. What does maghdub mean? I give you the fatiha. المغضوب what is مغضوب means ها طيب ولا الضالين listen to this carefully carefully the غضب is come from whom from whom and ضالين come from whom coming from Allah coming from them the غضب from Allah come boom مغضوب عليه and you feel from the المغضوب مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قال ذلك دلالة على ضلالهم البعيد ولا الضالين تماديهم في الضلال they went too far to say but the غضب boom comes because the غضب is a result of them intentionally not to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, therefore the wrath come upon them. But Dalal, the Dalin, they went to stay. But this is have occurred on them. Do you see you hear what I'm saying? Would you recite Fatha the same? Okay. Uh, read this next one. What is this here? Madu Sila. Why do you call it Madu Sila? Pronouns of are you yes. Let's say the pronoun. What the the word come after the Madu Sila what next? Now translate this. Translate it. Alladhi, the one. The home. Mulku samawati wal ard. Did you see this here? 
الذي له belong to him the emphasis on the pronoun this is mulk as-samawati wal ard belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you recite it iqra'a tani kida bi ta'anni kida alladhi lahu mulk as-samawati wal ard wallahu ala kulli shay'in shaheed my sheikh said even ala kulli shay'in shaheed how you pronounce this shay'in shaheed if you are done not tajweed, what you would have said? Ala kulli shay'in shaheed. If you're not tajweed, then you say what? There is nothing, nothing that exists. Allah is not witnessing. There is no a single time. La tanfakku shahadatuhu an khalqihi. His shahada, his witnessing of his creation does not disconnect from it. It happened in every second. Go to the next. I'm going to give you some examples. Now, Maddu Sila, listen to this carefully. I'm, I'm, some of you who don't have background in Tajweed, I'm sorry, maybe I'm getting you lost a little bit. In Maddu Sila, what is the ruling? When do you have Maddu Sila? A vowel. Taib, here, there's a vowel or not? There's a vowel? No, no, look to the gym. There's a vowel or no vowel? Preceding it. Preceding it. It's supposed to happen what? Matsila. What happened when there's no matsila here? There's matsila here? In this ayah? Why? Why are there exceptions? Hello? Huh? No, no, the, the, the ruling is the ha, that the, the letter before it has a vowel. Here, the rule it is there, but you don't say it. Two exceptions in the Quran, two places. Why is that? Because, again, with the meaning. Qalu, qalu arjihi wa akha. They're talking about Musa, alayhi salam. They said, اقرا يا اخي اقرا قالوا ارجه واخاه وارسل في المدائن حاشرين they said have him to wait but not wait wait and bring ارسل المدائن حاشرين meet immediately do this don't give him long time don't have said next year we're going to gather people. This immediately resolved this issue. This man creating fitna. If it was not because of the context, it could have been what? But now, Allah described to you what they have said, what they meant, and even you can feel what they said. That means all of them said. Talking about a group of people. That all of them have consensus said, do this. وَأَرْسِلْ فِي الْمَدَائِنِ حَاشِرِينَ Don't leave any city. All of the city. And that's why when you read it in English, let him wait, he and his brother, and send people to the city to bring people. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me. But <laughs> you, can you speak in English? It says, let him wait and send people in the city to bring people. Do you say that? You don't. This is only the word of Allah is Arabic. <laughs> Here, look at this other ruling. By the way, I'm just giving a glimpse of this because there's I, about 17 examples I have in the med. But I'm just doing this very quickly so that it gives you the taste of it so you can come back to Fawak. Now, uh, here, what is this? The ruling here. Saima, this is Matsila or Lila? In Hafs. In Hafs. No? Arif. Uh, but in Hafs, why, why he changed that? Why is the Matsila here? This year, 
هذبعه ويخلد فيه مهانا الله says يضاعف له العذاب the punishment will be double for him or her يوم القيامة day of judgment and would dwell on it فيه مهانا because the person will be thrown into the hellfire hellfire doesn't have surface have only a hole on it if they had their sheikh now go to the next one Now, this tarqiq and tafkhim, صح ولا لا? This is my favorite part of it. It is really, you know, we cannot say blow your mind because Muslims don't blow anything. <laughs> it makes your mind wonders. Okay? Now, <laughs> you read the Quran in the Quran where, first of all, because the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Arab who is not Muslim, they say the choice of the Quran of words cannot be a choice of human being. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might say something in one surah and say something similar to other surah, but the choice of the word is different and the sound coming is different. If there is hams, hams, you know, or is it tafkhim, and you know the context have changed. Subhanallah. The message that what Allah is conveying here is a little bit than different that context. And give you an example, of course, uh, uh, my love for the Quran, and I think you love also, it connects to the love of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Am I correct? Now, give you an example, coming to the next. Ha, Surah Al Muzammil. Wallahi, subhanAllah, when I read Surah Al Muzammil, I feel, in, I feel Allah as if Allah whispering to the ear of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what? It's been covered, and the lamb, ya mashayikh, the lamb is harf ish, diamond. Muraqqaq wal mufakham, illa fi lafz al jalala. Faqallahu, ya ayyuha al muzzammil. Iqra, iqra, iqra. Awal ayah? Ayah, 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 iqra, iqra, iqra. You realize in Surah Al Muzammil there's a lot of use of lamb. Muzammil, a layl, kalila, minhu kalila. ورتل القرآن ترتيلا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا يا سلام يا أخي This is amazing How Allah talked to his prophet محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم By the way I could have stopped in every one every verse and go to the أحكام and the letters the ruling of the letters. Al Muzammil, how is it pronounced Al Muzammil? Then the dikmas are plus. Ya ayuha, fish, ish fihna. What is this? How do you pronounce Al Muzammil? Ya ayuha Al Muzammil. 
Did you hear this? Did you hear? I'm sound crazy today? <laughs> it's okay. And Muzammil, and Rasulullah was covered with what? Covering himself with what? He's under the blanket. He, does, he tied his, who covered him? Really covered him was Khadija radiallahu anha. For Rasulullah was what? Collecting himself. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal Muzammil. Because he wanted him to what? To take off the tazmil. But look what he, how he talked to him. You see that? What, what is this here? What is this? Kasra. Read this together. So soft. So beautiful. Are you, are you with me? You will never read Surah al muzammil again the same if you go like this. You feel that, subhanAllah, you have goosebumps like I am doing this moment. Ya ayyuhal muzammil qumil layla illa qalila You feel the softness of the rhythm of the verses. Only Allah speak like that. Go to the next. Just, uh, by the way, you could want to exercise, but I'm just watching the time. Here. Now, <laughs> what is the on the dal? What is in the in al muzammil? What the shadda was? And then, ya khi ya khi ya khi. This is a word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's not just a Joe speaking. This is Allah is speaking. It's not a human being talking. Allah Almighty, the King of the Kings, speak. No, no, don't take it personal if your name is Job. I'm speaking about Allah. Okay, now, how do you recite this? One of you. Anyway, Simon, recite this. Okay. Any one of you? Subhanallah, stop. Look, the ra is a hakamish, is hukma ra. Huna, Limada Muraka Karahina. Subhanallah, Allah whispering to Rasul Salam again. Ya ayuhal muddathir. Subhan whispering. And al muddathir, like al muzammil. Because he's what also? Covered. Like, really? <laughs> they said. But he sought his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If, if you want somebody to do something and somebody covering with the thing, as human beings said that, get up! Go! But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Ya ayuhal muddathir. <laughs> Not ayuhal muddathir. No, no, al muddathir. Qum fa'anthir. قم فأنذر وربك فكبر وثيابك فطهر. but what happened here؟ لماذا تغير السياق؟ what he said to him؟ ورجزيش؟ فهجر. why is change from ترقيق to تفخيم؟ You want him to have no hesitation because he's mudathir. The matter is strong. It's, he has to confront the whole world. He says, here, stand firm. <coughs> Encouragement. Rujza <laughs> fahjur. And then went back to what? <laughs> what? Here. Aha. Ya Sheikh. Why went back to Riqqa? 
والرجز فاهجر ولا تمن تستكثر ولربك فاصبر سبحان الله Only Allah can speak like that. Hajar is to, to abandon, to let go, don't associate yourself with. But all the other things, he talked to him what? With tarqiq. With softness. By the way, each one of those, the no man khalaq to wahida. So let's go. Let's go to the next. Here, talking about what? About whom? What the, this surah talks about? You know this surah? It's talking about whom? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, iqra, ya akhi. Iqra. And one of you recite. Shaykh, iqra, wahfikum, iqra. نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب what does sheen in the huruf? What do you call the sheen in the huruf? Ayu harf sheen. What the sound of sheen? Sifat al al sheen ish. Huh? Al hams? Huh? Al tafashi? Huh? Listen to this. The sifat of the sheen is what? You said tafashi? Safir? The, the sheen. Shh. Al jarayan? No, no, I'm saying. Huh? Safir and hams. The sad. The sifa of the letter is what? Huh? لا مفقهم بس أنا أقول إيش تسميها من أحرف إيش؟ أحرف الصفير. الزا؟ لا 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 لا. The sifa, the sifa, the sifa. مش تفخيم. يعني قلت إيش؟ صفير أو نعم؟ صفير. Allah What is the name of Allah? Allah Huh? Wa al-dhal Listen Maybe I would like you to Those who study Tajweed to go back and check on this. Let me explain to you what's happening here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said earlier, he chose word. The sound of them has that emotional impact on the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alam nashrah laka sadrak wa wada'na anka wizrak الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك فإن مع العسر the عسر is the the ra in the عسر مفقمة مرققة ها light a new عسر ها why إن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا What do you understand from this? Okay, let me explain just to know to have you to try to guess this. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in each one of them when he talk about ألم نشرح نشرح 
اشرح دحا تكم في مويه الم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي انقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فان مع العسر يسرا The usr is difficulty. Yusr is ease. Allah telling you, no matter what the usr look like, it will be an easy one because the yusr is greater than it. And he repeated actually another thing in tafsir that al usr, he used the definite article twice. That means the usr is this one and ease is many. But he said, Inna ma'al usri yusra. He could have said what? He could have flipped it. He could have said what? Inna ma'al Yes. Inna inna al yusri. No, ma'al yusri. No, no, no. Ba'd al usri yusr. بعد العسر بعد اليسر بعد العسر you could have flip it but he mentioned to you العسر first because in Arabic language يقولون هذه عدم البلاغة if he said يأتي اليسر بعد العسر no no he said إن مع العسر that no matter how much difficult it is it is easy it's not that much يسرى اليسر is greater than the عسر. ذات الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم said والله لا يغلب عسر يسريني. By Allah no difficulty will defeat more than one is. But العسر is in this آية مرقق يا عثمان. أنت سامع معي؟ إنما العسر يسرى عسر يسرى خفف لك العسر. It's easy. No matter how difficult it looks the is greater than it. Go to the next. Ha. This I am fin. Now, some, somebody read this. Mm -hmm. Read this in English. Osama tried to translate to Osman, translate this in English. Osama, translate, translate this. Uh, and if his shirt had been cut from the back, then she was a liar and he was among those who were truthful. Uh, but when uh, he saw that the shirt was indeed cut from the back, uh, said this is part of your plot. Indeed, your plot uh, is of great nature. This kathabat in the middle of what? Middle of the ayah. When kana qamiyusuhu qudda min dubrin fa kathabat. How what happened to the ta here? Huh? Kathabat. Wa huwa? For you can see the the statement. كان قميصه his shirt قد من دبر فكذبت وهو من الصادقين ولما رأى قميصه قد من دبر قال وات ها when he found this is investigation this is shirt being turned from the back or the front let us see then when he found what the conclusion he's really upset the man قال إنه من كيدكن إن كيدكن عظيم. Did you see that? Did you see the emphasis here? This is one very quickly. Oh, except when he said من الصادقين. Everything else, until he come to the conclusion, he said what? 
انه من كيد كنا ان كيد كنا عظيم this is from your plot your plot is great you see, you see what i'm saying the conclusion he came to there's an emphasis in the conclusion not in the process you hear that i'm saying طيب go to the next Uh, so you hear that? إنكم كيد كنا إن كيد كنا عظيم. Look at this here. Talk to Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. What do you see in this ayah? I want you to use all your that with the skills that you know and all your life in explaining this ayah. Read this ayah. اقرأ هذه الآية. صحيح ما قرأ هذه. Or Maryam. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me ask you this. By the way, this ayah, a sheikh of mine will have kept you until next day in the morning. <laughs> Because when you talk about Rasulullah, you just you need to have your sleeping bag with you. <laughs> That's what he does. Okay? Now, here, Tell me first this hukm al here on this. Huh? Subhanallah. Wa innaka, you, Muhammad, very surely. Innaka. This is in English. What it says in English? Huh? Yeah. What is that? Excuse me, not making it fun in English. All the language. What is, we read it in English if you want to do the translation. What? Indeed. Indeed. Uh -huh. Verily, indeed. Truly. Truly. But when you read it in Arabic, can you say, indeed, verily? You can say that? Yeah. But this is what it says actually. The sound of it is not in the, not the translation, but the sound. Wa innaka. وَإِنَّكَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَرَسُوَ اللَّهُ It leaves no doubt in your mind and your heart that Rasulullah is the best of all. Because he said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ إيش حكم التجوت هنا؟ الله أكبر Did he say that Allah Akbar? Why? There's Izhar here. Taban, Adamat al Huluk. Wa in Nakala ala Hulukin. Aweem. Mush Mafi Dram, Mafikin. Hulukin. Aweem. Did you hear that? Did you hear the excitement in my voice? That about the Rasulullah one ayah is very loaded. And Allah saying that. وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ This is amazing. That's good, the next. Because I said, we're not sleeping back. This will go quickly. Okay. The next. Read this. حتى إذا أتوا على واد النمل قالت نملة قالت نملة يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده لا يحطمنكم سليمان وجنوده وهم لا يشعرون. Now, this ayah indicates that Sulaiman عليه السلام and his soldiers, the one what really traveling a long distance Hatta till they came till I don't know how to say it in English 
<تصفيق> لا أتوا على ولي النمل قالت نملة ود النملة how the نملة is talking يا أيها النمل ادخلوا مساكنكم I want you to look to the صفات الحروب because I have five minutes this is an exercise at home look to every letter what this نملة is saying how she was speaking go to the next because I was given five minutes and I have a what time is it now? 8.35 okay we'll go now no 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 what, what, what did you do? go excuse me this year in Surah Al-Rahman what's the most repeated verse? here this Allah is what? Allah مد الاشباع وبأي آلاء ربكما ايش كم هذا المد كم حركة؟ four or five but let's go with wash but even in 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 halves how how long you do the, this four or five what that indicates if you say, read it in English. <coughs> in English. Whichever. Yes, translation. You want to say, to convey this message to somebody. What do you say in English? What? Which favor? Which of the favors of your Lord do you do not know? How you, uh, a favor have man? Your favors in English has man? Favor. No. <laughs> <laughs> Allah telling you his favors is so many. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ تَتْرَكَمْ دَمْ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانْ Emphasis on Allah. If you read it, it says, SubhanAllah, فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ My health, my wealth, my children, my sanity. Which one? آلَاءِ Now, go to the next. This will be at the last one. The ha is half wish. The sound, the sound of it comes from where? Hmm? But what, what it does when it's this? Oh, it's also got the breath. What? It's got breath. Aha! Jazakallah khair. The word rih. Rih is indicated what? What is rih? When? You get it, my sister? How you sound? The ha, yeah, Simon, man. How you say the ha? They ask you to do what? The ha, have air come with it or no? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the sound of the reh is what? Huh. There is a sarir also for reh. Sometimes, shh. Sarin, and after the sarsar, what what the rule again? Ala, ada, ish, abdul. It's hard. Allah telling you this sarsar is not in a small one. Berihin sarsarin, aatiya. What he wants to do is aim the word. You could have used another word. Slow or not? Greek in sar sarin atia. The fourth is a huge wind, massive wind. But in English it says, with the wind that what? What did English say? Huh? Furious wind. Furious wind. Okay, no problem. Sakhara alim seba alayalin wa tamaniyat ayamin huzuma. All of this. Watar al qoma fiha sarah. Kanum ajazu nakhlin khawiya. The last slide, khalas. You did the last one, is it? <laughs> Just give it a one more. Okay? I will do this and will stop. Read this. Read the Iqra Hadi. Alhaakumu al-takathur Hatta zurtumu al-maqabir 
كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Al-Hakum Wealth had distracted you Al-Takathur Is it Muraqqaqa or Mufakhama? Daraa We exaggerate Our wealth We exaggerate our power Al-Hakum Al-Takathur In your eyes Hatta zurtum Al-Maqabir Al-Maqabir Graves Until you visit the grave and Maqabir. But because this distracts us so much, he said, Kalla Sofa Ta'lamoon. Because he said, Law Alimtum. Ta'lamoon. If you know this is not good for you, don't let this happen from Akhirah. Thumma Kalla Sofa Ta'lamoon. He said, ثم كلا كلا لو تعلمون 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 علم اليقين The knowledge of certainty لا ترون يوسي الجحيم ثم لا ترونها يوسي for sure عين اليقين ثم لا تسألون يوم إذن عن الله سبحان الله دين سيد التسجيد تسجيد إن أرى من كسر شدد على الله شدد على الله means emphasize the matter for him or that what it does because of this first statement here you see shed all over the place وسبحانك اللهم بحمدك لا إله إلا أنت الصفر الكوتب لك بذاكم الله خير we can do more one by one of the Hakam Tajweed and the relationship with the Quran. Maybe it's another time. So, Assalamu alaikum. By the way, I, can I ask you to check one thing? I want you to check the Ismam. You know what Ismam is? It's, what is the Ismam in the Quran? Amen. Well, there's one in Surah Yusuf. Aha. What is uh, Surah Yusuf? That manna. I would like you to know why there's a shimam there. And sector, for example. Kalla bal. I want you to know why there's a, a pose. Kalla bal rana ala qulubi. Amazing way. If you do that Quran like this, we'll never decide in the same. Zakun al I, I wanted to uh, really thank him for all the wisdom he shared with us. Inshallah, we can take it upon ourselves to uh, really take what he's been advising us and take it seriously. Look for this uh, the science in the Quran. Hope we will have follow up sessions in which we can learn more. Um, I wanted to, uh, Sefo, if you could pass around the purple. So I'd, I'd like to uh, introduce you to a program we have. If everyone can grab two of these, okay, I'll explain why. Everyone can grab two of these. Okay, just take uh, two and pass it on. Um, this is uh, a Tajweed course we have starting. Uh, it's a very unique program. It's a year-long course. It actually starts now. Um, there's some students here that are in the year-long course. Today is their first day. And so this is a beautiful way to start that course. Uh, and they'll be having orientation at, at 9 o'clock uh, after we pray Isha in the classroom. Uh, but this is a course that you're also able to join next week if you're interested. But uh, it's a year-long course. It's once a week. We've got teachers. I'd like for our teachers to stand up for a second. Instructors in course. Sanya. Sanya. 
So we have Ms. Um, Azalkorat here. She's been teaching, she was also teaching with us last year. Uh, so Senya, she's new to the area. We're, uh, she's going to be helping out with the teaching as well. Uh, Saza Maryam, who's been teaching at Kauake for about five years. Uh, and um, uh, Hafiz uh, Osama, who was teaching this summer and he's joining us for the year course. In addition to the teachers you see here, we have uh, Sheikh Sohail Lahir, who is a uh, uh, director of uh, Quran at Fawake. We have uh, Sheikh Rai, who's a guest instructor. Uh, he's a very famous uh, uh, reciter of the Quran. And we're also adding other scholars. So we're building a real a, a department uh, at Fawake for the focus on the recitation of the Quran. Um, we, in the past, have focused a lot on the Arabic language, and we realized that you know, the understanding of the Quran is important, uh, essential, but if we don't, as a community, and if you go to the masajid, if you go to even community leaders of major organizations, I guarantee you, you sit them down with Mamajid or Ustaz uh, Osama or Ustaz um, Abdul Karim or one of the sisters, they will make mistakes in Fatah. They'll make major mistakes, not even minor mistakes. Uh, and I would say 90% of the community cannot read the Quran properly. And Really, if that's the case we're in in the first, second, third generation in America, imagine how it's going to be in the eighth, ninth, tenth generation. Okay, you you may have you know the entire pronunciation of the Quran could be lost in this continent if we don't take a stance right now. And so we're very excited that we're putting more effort. And a lot of the teachers have come together. They sacrificed their time and their their knowledge to to give to students. And it's for students that want to really take this seriously. Uh, there's uh, in the course we have uh, tests with every lesson, uh, online quizzes that you can take for self-assessment primarily. Um, in addition to that, we have videos. Sheikh Sohail Lahir has released ten videos. Uh, there are tutorial videos for each of the theory lessons, so that that allows us in the class time, three hours a week, to spend more time on practicing and reading and reading and reading, so that you can actually implement and practically learn to read the Quran um, uh, more fluently and more accurately. One of the students actually, uh, she's not in the classroom so I'll embarrass her, she said that this was the first year after taking the year course that she finished reading the Quran in Ramadan. Right? And so we really want between now and next Ramadan for all of us to drastically improve our ability to read and that will transform our relationship with the Quran and also is the bedrock from which every other science, any other high level science, you know, you see all these books here, this every uh, area of this library in Mela, preserve Triple IT and the Fairfax Institute and all the hard work they're doing in preserving this intellectual history, but the foundation is really with being able to recite the Quran properly, and that's why many many of the major scholars, even later on in life, they would review their tajweed over and over again. So I'd really encourage all of you to consider taking it seriously, whether you'd like to join the course or you find some other means of doing that. Uh, this course starts uh, this month and it'll go till May. Um, it's once a week uh, for three hours, and it, inshallah, they'll help you get um, some impact. In addition to what I've mentioned, one of the unique aspects, if you look at, uh, if everyone has the purple sheet in front of them, look at the, the snowball page. It is a page of the snowball. People will think that's funny. Um, but really, our goal is not to make a slow snowball effect. We call it the Tajweed Revolution, because every one of us not only is a student, but is a teacher. So we'd like for everyone to learn the rules, learn to recite properly, whether you teach your family members, whether you teach your children. And I'm gonna um, point out Sister Nicole here. She actually took the course and she taught her children. She was teaching them at home. And you can tell us how good a teacher she was. And she also uh, started another class at a different masjid to teach. And we've had that philosophy and that ethos in Fawak in all the different areas, whether it's Arabic or in Tajweed uh, or any other subject that we want us to be part of a chain in which we receive and we also give. That improves ourselves and that's the only way. You know, we can't have the teachers we mentioned here teach thousands of Muslims that are in, just in the D.C. area. But if every one of us takes it upon ourselves to learn and then obviously with the correct, um, you know, uh, oversight in which we ask our teachers, we don't teach the wrong thing, but teach what we know and be sure we know it correctly to someone else, right? That's really what we want to do. I ask you to take two of these because one, keep for yourself, and one, I ask that you give it to someone else in the community in the next few days that you think would be interested, whether it's Jummah tomorrow or someone else. Even if you can't take the course yourself, if you can't join, but even if you can't, you can help someone else do that, whether it's just by informing them or if you want to fund them 
we have a scholarship fund that you can you can use to do that. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'd like so if you can pass around the books. So these are the books that uh, Sister Hannah and Mamaj and, and you can see the amount of effort that even Sister Hannah put into the PowerPoint and behind the scenes she does a lot of work to help preserve Mamaj's knowledge. If you can just pass keep passing them around. Uh, and everyone, if you can take one, okay, I'll tell you what to do. Just keep one with you, and you have three choices. You can purchase it, okay, you can leave it on the table, or you can uh, just take it as a gift, inshallah. So those are your three choices. Um, but I would re highly recommend, even if you have a copy, try to purchase a copy and give it to someone else. Uh, it's, it's a very foundational book that will help you uh, develop that relationship with the Quran, inshallah. Uh, lastly, uh, we have some of our three uh, posters here. This is this is what we use to teach. Uh, they're all across the board if you haven't noticed. So you can walk by and take a look at them if you get a chance. But uh, this is part of the toolkit we use in the course, uh, the year-long course, to help the students learn to teach. They actually have to stand in front of the classroom and they've got to teach the other students what they've learned. So it's a very interactive process. So if anyone's interested in that, we actually have a table out here. We can answer more questions. And Jazakallah Khair for joining us. We'll be moving into the Musalla for Isha. We have to quickly pray Isha because there's another event after that. So Jazakallah Khair for coming and thank you uh, to our Qadi as well and everyone else. Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>